I'm here with Adron Chambers, the outfielder for the Bridgeport Bluefish. Adron, you spent the beginning of your career with St. Louis Cardinals from 07 to 13. What is it about the Cardinals organization and how they help their minor league players develop to becoming professional baseball players and be successful in the show? I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, um, you know, just the guys that they came through the organization. You know, you got the, your, your, your Lou Brocks and your Stan Musials and, I mean, you got so many guys that uh, were able to, to stick around and give guys like myself, Willie McGee, you know, talk to me and give me uh, some great advice on how to approach the game and how to, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, come prepared every day. Uh, I think that's what gives the Cardinals and a lot of these older organizations a lot of uh, – uh, a little, uh, st a step above, I guess I can say, uh, than the other organizations. Yeah, like, like you said, like the Cardinals, they always seem like they're in the playoff picture. In '11, when you play for them, they won the World Series, and they just always seem like they're in contention for the playoffs. So, what makes them so consistent and kind of like uh, example to the other organizations how to be, you know, consistent? Well, 100 percent is of how they play the game. You know, uh, you know, my first day. When I got there, I kind of felt like I was in the major leagues just because of the expectations that they had for me, whether it was, you know, in batting practice, running down balls or, you know, wearing a collar shirt to the field. Or, and not necessarily the military style, you know what I'm saying, attitude, but at the same time, they they, they, they put you, um, you had to be responsible, accountable, you know what I mean? So it, because of that, that, that helped me understand the game and made me study and made me, you know, want to, you know what I'm saying, come to the field and, and want to learn and, and prepare myself so I can be a, a, a major league baseball player. Yeah. Now, you know, I got to ask you about the 2011 World Series when you guys won over the Texas Rangers. What was that like to be part of that team and to win the World Series? That seems like a really special moment for you. Oh, man, it was all of the emotions you can add up and put them all together. You know, it was hostility. It was happiness. It was happy flights. It was uh, rally squirrels. It was uh, Albert Pujols hitting three home runs. David Freeze hitting home runs. It was Chris Carpenter, you know, pitching a great game against Philly. I mean, it was just... A whole bunch of, you know, that whole year, you know what I mean, was great. You know, it had a lot of ups and it had a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, times where we were, you know, the, the organization was, was worried. You know, Albert got hurt, you know what I mean. It was just a lot of things that happened that year. And then to see us uh, stand on top at the end and, and, and be there for, you know, those million people in the streets, you know what I'm saying, the parade, oh, yeah. it was unbelievable, you know what I mean. I, I'll never be able to forget that day. Yeah. Can you talk about like the crowd and the electricity in the stadium for those playoff games in the World Series. I mean, I'm pretty sure as a player that excites you and motivates you to, you know, do well. Most definitely. I mean, for, uh, for first off, St. Louis is, you know, and I bet you anybody in baseball would say that they have one of the, the, the greatest fan bases in the world, you know what I mean? Uh, they really understand the game of baseball. They know how to appreciate their players and how to give us the feedback that we need when things aren't going our way and then especially when we're doing good. They know how to root for us. Oh, yeah. Like you said earlier, you're part of that uh, celebration parade in yeah. St. Louis. I mean, what is that like to have the city of St. Louis behind you like that and all those fans to come out for you guys? I mean, I, I know uh, I, I got there in September. I was a September call-up. So uh, being in that parade and having, you know, seeing my name on the side of a truck or, you know, I still remember the day Albert, I mean, uh, not Albert Pur, but Tony Russo when we had we had our, our ceremony inside of the stadium at the parade, and uh, I was a part of that uh, game-winning run that uh, against the Cubs, and he told me that was the greatest game that he ever been a part of. So those moments, uh, those are the moments that I I cherish. You know, despite the ring and all that kind of stuff, but it's the moments inside of the, that that those. Uh, times that that I really you know appreciate and, I, and I'm gonna be able to take with me and I'm a, I tell my family to this day I use them as examples even when I'm out here working now you know uh, my goal is to get back and uh, play in the major leagues and I use those moments to kind of help me after St. Louis he bounced around a little bit from went to Houston and Toronto and then the Chicago Cubs I'm sure St. Louis fans maybe don't enjoy seeing oh, yeah. that uniform but um, what similarities and differences did you see in the Cubs organization from St. Louis and did you see like you know the Cubs are doing really well now did you see that potential in that team when you were played for them last year oh most definitely all of those are great organizations uh even though I unfortunately I was traded uh from Houston uh but but you know I, I kind of feel like if I was uh if I would have prepared myself like I should have you know all of that would have been good but at the same time you know you're talking about the Cubs uh the Cubs you've seen it when Joe got there and they already ha they have a great base it was just 
you know, when, when you don't have the guys like, you know, all of those guys that I name, it's, it's kind of, it's, I mean, the Yankees have, you know, Derek Jeter and, and the name, the Reggie Jackson, so many guys. So, and, and the Cubs do too, don't get me wrong. But uh, now uh, they're starting to see that, you know, they have potential, they have life over there too. And having guys like Chris Bryant and Addison Russell and, you know, Lester and man, so many other guys, man, that, that they, they're starting to come together and realize, you know, they're learning how to play the game. I mean, they already knew how to. I mean, I'm not trying to downplay none of those guys. But, you know, I remember the day when Joe came in and uh, we had to do a relay, you know what I'm saying, a uh, 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 drill. <laughs> You know what I mean? Things like that, and, and, and you're seeing it come together right now. Now they're playing fundamental baseball, and it's, and it's actually very, very fun to watch. And if I was an opponent on that team, I mean, against them, I would love to play play against the Cubs because you can see that they, they know how to play, and I always want to play against the greatest, and they seem like one of the greatest teams right now. Yeah. Now, right now you're playing in the Atlantic League for the Bridgeport Bluefish. What is your approach to coming to independent ball for the first time? And, like, what are your thoughts on the town level in this league? Is is it like AAA ball for you in a way? I mean, the crazy thing is it is. It's great baseball over here. I mean, it's a lot of older guys, a lot of guys that never played before. But at the same time, it's a lot, I mean, it's great baseball, you know. Um, and, and, and my goal is to get back to the major leagues. And I'm happy to be here right now. I'm happy that they have a league like this that I can uh, come and work and, uh, and and get my groove back and do what I got to do and appreciate the game more and more because baseball is a lovely sport. You know, sometimes we can feel like slaves around here, but at the same time, you know, what baseball has to offer has a lot more to do with, you know, self-control, uh, uh, your relationship with, with the people that you don't even know. You know what I'm saying? I love the game of baseball, and uh, baseball has given me the opportunity to be a man giving me the opportunity to help my family and giving me the opportunity to, to be around some great people that, that uh, have become my friends and family for the rest of my life. Yeah. Now, you're 24 when you're in the World Series with the Cardinals. You're 29 now. Right. Do you think you're a better player now? Uh, maybe better is not the right word, but maybe a more mature or knowledgeable and experienced player compared to when you first got up to the big leagues. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely, and I think that I remember one of my uh, Dan Radisson, He used to tell me all the time, man, it's gonna take about a two thousand at bats in the minor leagues to get to the major leagues. And, and ironically, he was he was right. I always thought I was a major league ball player when I first signed, but uh, the time that I've been able to to experience, you know, do A ball and double A and triple A, man, it uh, it has really helped me develop and becoming uh, who I am today. So. Most definitely. When I was 24, I might have been able to run a little bit quicker or faster, but today I would, I would take the knowledge today over anything and, and wish I was able to apply that when I was 24. But I appreciate it now, and it's, it's helping me uh, to be a smart ball player and, and, uh, uh, and, and continue to develop. Yeah. Final question for you. Throughout your career, you've kind of had the knack for the Germanics a little bit. You've had a few walk-off hits with the Cardinals. Yeah. You had a walk-off hit last week for the Bridgeport Bluefish. Right. So what is that like knowing you're the guy that helped your team get the victory and you're the one getting mobbed by your teammates at the end of the game? I kind of take it. I kind of take that as because I get that question a lot. It's like, yeah. you know, after that first time of doing it, I did it in the minor leagues, and it was like because I mean, it, it, all it takes a lot of time is just that one experience. Right. You get that experience, so you kind of know – you know how to calm yourself down and how to, you know what I'm saying, slow your heartbeat down and just, you know what I'm saying, thank the Lord above just for giving you the opportunity to do what you do. And then I go out there and I just, you know, do what I do, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to do it every time, but for the most part, when the opportunity come up, I understand how to, you know, slow things down a little bit, give me a good pitch or if I'm on defense, you know, be prepared for every pitch and just, you know, be ready. You know, I, mean, I think that's all it is. It's a continuation of the game. You know, luckily, you know, when you get hits like that, that's the last play that can happen during the game. But at the same time, I think, you know what I'm saying, it's just con it's a continuation of the game. You know what I'm saying? It's you preparing yourself just like you would any other at bat. Appreciate that, Ron. No all the best, you, man. Thank Thanks you so much. It.